Okay, I wanted to do another video on the definition of the derivative just to make sure it's very clear on what exactly the derivative is. All right, so the official definition of the derivative. Is this here. That's the official definition. The derivative is, is a limit of some function. It, it's a limit. That's why before we get to this, the, this definition, we spend so much time talking about what limits are, how to interpret them, how to evaluate different kinds of limits, so that when we get to this definition, you're comfortable with what a limit is. At the beginning of calculus, we talk about how limits were created. The idea of a limit was created. One of the reasons was to solve the problem where uh, of how we have a function. So we have some function f of x. And, and, at, and at a point on this function, we want to find what the equation of the tangent line is. That's the point of that's one of the points of calculus. That's why limits were introduced for this reason. So again, we learned all about limits. Now we're getting back to the heart of the matter, which was, we, okay, now we want to use limits to solve that problem that we have. So th this this limit solves that problem. How does it do that? Okay, okay, we want to find the equation of the tangent line at a point. Okay, so at this point, we're going to call this point A. It's at, at x is equal to a. We want to find the equation of the tangent line at this point. How can we do that now that we, now that we know limits? Well, we can use limits to find the slope of the tangent line at a. And then once we have the slope, we'll have a point in a slope, which means we can find the equation of the tangent line. We can, say, we can do this. We can say, okay, let's take another point away from a. It's, it's h away from a. So this is at a plus h, all right? If we take the slope of this line, which is called the secant line, take the, take the secant line slope, but then, and then that formula for the slope, just take the limit of that formula as h goes to zero. And that would be the slope of the tangent line at a. You see, do you see that? So, so what's the formula for the slope of this secant line? So this is f of a. This is f of a plus h. You see? You just evaluate, this is the function evaluated at a, the function evaluated at, at, at a plus h. The slope of the secant line That's easy. We do, it's just we just it's f of a plus h minus f of a over over what a plus h minus a. What is a plus h minus a? That's just h. See, that's what this is. It's exactly th these two. It's exactly the same thing. But now to get the derivative, you just take the limit of this as h goes to zero, and you get what? The slope of the tangent line. And that's it. We, so there you go. We solved our problem. Now we've solved the problem that we, that we sought out to solve at the beginning of calculus. And this slope of the tangent line is so important, they give it a name. They call it a derivative, and they give it this notation. You, 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 take, you take the function, so like f of you have the function evaluated at, at A is F of A. That's the function evaluated at A. But the derivative of the function at A, they call that F prime of A. And, and the derivative, though, like, and I, and I just want to note, so you might, not have, you might not be familiar with this yet if, if you just started calculus, but people think of the derivative as, you know, This is this is this is the derivative as a as a function. When the derivative is the definition of the derivative, you're talking. It has nothing to do with 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 x. 
the derivative is at a point on a curve, at some point A. So you, there's no more X anymore. At some point A on a function, what is the rate of change or what, what is the slope of the tangent line at that point? That's, that's the derivative. That's the derivative. It has nothing to do with, like, with, with, with Xs or variables. The, the, this will, the derivative as a function is just when you, you apply this limit in, for in general for a function. So, so with, with, with this, we, we evaluated the, de, the derivative of x squared 2x. So now I can find the derivative at any point x on the curve x squared. Do you see the difference? In the video where we go through the definition of the derivative section in the calculus book, what I was trying to illustrate is that what, what they do in, in, the, in the textbook is they, they show you the different ways that you can write the derivative, the different kind of forms of it. This is important because it's just different ways. It's different ways you can view the derivative. There's different like ways you can look at it. So this is one way, where the way we set up the variables here. You can also, so again, the derivative is this, is the m. It's the slope of the tangent line at a point on a curve. So the, the, the way the textbook writes it, they put m is equal to the limit as x approaches a. of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. This is, you get the exact same result. If you do, if you do this, you, you're, gonna get the, if, you're gonna get the slope of the tangent line at a, at, a, at a point on a curve. You're gonna get the, which is what? The derivative, okay? So what they're doing is, so you've got a point, and we can start in negative territory like this and then, and then move to positive ter positive, the positive region. It's all, it's all, it, all, it works for any situation. So the way, this, the way this formula, the way we set it up is this is A, this is X, this is X minus A, this is f of x minus f of a, okay, and so you, you first you, you first write out the formula for the secant line, the slope of the secant line, so m, what is the slope of the secant line? Rise f of x minus f of a over run. And there you go, and then, and then now you take the limit as x goes to not as not as x goes to zero, as x goes to a, because because you're trying you're shrinking the 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 run down you're 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 letting that you're letting the run approach zero, so you're letting x approach a, and and you're going to get the same result. This is the the run's going to shrink, so you're get you're 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 approaching the slope of the tangent line. You're approaching there. You're approaching that. That, that, that that's that's the slope you're approaching the slope of that line just another way of another way of looking at it, another way of writing it and you might say well wait a minute isn't this the derivative as a function like, like we've got these x's in here isn't this you know what i was talking about you know the d dx notation no it's not because as x approaches a like for the derivative as a function after you take the limit when you take the limit for the derivative as a function you're left with some function of x. That's, that's what the result is. For the definition of the derivative, you're left with a number. You, the x's are gone. So as x approaches a, this goes to a, this goes to a, you're, you're left with f prime of a. You see? Okay, another form they, that the book shows is, is this. So the limit as delta x approaches zero of delta y over delta x, which is equal to the limit as x2 approaches x1 of f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, and the way you, you look at this is... So you've got a function. So this is 
x1. This is x2. This is f of x1. This is f of x2. And then this is delta x. This is delta y. Okay, so the slope of the secant line is delta y over delta x, which you could also write as Okay, so you can take either one of these limits, and, and again, how do you, to get the slope of the tangent line, you just make the denominator go to zero. So one of the limits is the limit as delta x goes to zero. The other limit is the limit as x2 approaches x1. You let, you let, the, you let this, the value on the right side of the point you're interested in. I mean, you could do it on the left. We'll, we'll show you can do it from the left, but you let the, the, the point you constructed away from the point that you're interested in approach the point you're interested in. Right, because we don't care about this this x two. We're not worried. That, that's not what we're concerned with. We're concerned with the slope of the tangent line at x one. All right, and why? What's why is this form? What, what's interesting about this form? What, what they're trying to point out is that in a lot of situations, you might have instead of like velo like position versus time or velocity versus time. So the so the so the derivative of the velocity versus time curve would be acceleration. You know, time is kind of a in the in the back the time the time variable is kind of in the background but let's say you have there might be other other relations where like maybe you'll have maybe you have like revenue on the y axis and expenses on the x and you've got a function well you know both of these variables are kind of at, at the foreground so you you can look at it like the the derivative at a point on this curve is more of the limit as change in expenses approaches zero of change in revenue over change in expenses you see it's it's like you look at it like the the derivative is the the rate of change of revenue with respect to expenses it's just another way of looking at it okay and then the last way that they present that the book shows is the last form you take this okay the, that that original standard definition of the derivative and what the derivative represents a, a physical quantity as opposed to just like a slope of a tangent line or it, 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 it represents something something physically meaningful like for example the velocity at point a right so we can even we can take all of this Okay, but instead what you have is this is a, a position versus time curve. This is an S of T. And so with the velocity is equal to S prime of T. You know, it's not quite like the, yeah, you could, you could, you could say that you could you could with this curve you could say the limit this is the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta s over delta t that's the velocity you can say that but i guess what they're trying to illustrate is that it's a little different than just saying like the change of revenue with respect to the change in expenses or something like that. They're, they're just trying to show that the derivative can represent the derivative, the slope of the line at a point on a curve can represent like a, like a new domain. Like you've got position versus time, the rate of change of, of the curve at a point 
means this kind of this new thing, the velocity, 